everyone welcome back from spring break hopefully your quarantine is going well and um yeah we're going to start into a new unit now we just finished our polynomials unit and so our next unit is going to be talking about rational functions all right um so term four remember is going to be graded right okay um we will expect you know that you continue to like access the class every school day all right and that um you know, we learn stuff. Um, we're going to be doing the same kind of thing we've been doing with um, notes and then assignments every day um, with um, um, assessments thrown in. You know, I'll, I'll give you a warning, a heads up about those, um, you know, um, from there. Um, I will also be um, giving those assessments through Schoology like I've been doing. Okay, so that's going to be our goal. All right. Um, so yeah, um, I can't say that we're going to be reviewing for every single assessment, but the assessments will be based off of the homework assignments that I give you. So think of like all the homework as like the reviews. So really, really make sure that you know how to do those homework problems. And then the um, quizzes themselves will be just like the questions from the homeworks with maybe numbers, which of course numbers change and stuff like that. Okay, so um, this unit, and of course, if you have any questions, please message me on Schoology and stuff. Um, this unit we're going to be talking about, like I said, is adding uh, is rational functions. Okay, that's the key thing here. Now, um, we um, actually skipped the graphing part of rational functions right now. Um, I'm going to kind of see, again, we're, the, sh the timing kind of like... I don't know, we're, we're kind of like behind by a unit according to the normal schedule um, for Algebra 2, you know, without missing weeks of school and stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to try and focus on the most important topics first. And then, um, you know, we'll see what we have left over to, to touch on um, towards the end of, you know, the class stuff like that. But I want to hit this stuff that I know, I know, I know you definitely need to know for future classes, pre-calculus, and, and especially calculus, too, uh, for those of you moving on in that path. All right, so anyway... Um, what is a rational function? Okay, so um, I've already started writing some stuff out here. So a rational function, right? Well, you we know what a rational number is. A rational number is a number that can be written in the form, um, you know, a over b, where a and b are both integers, right? So a rational function, then it stands to reason, is a function of the form p of x over q of x, where both p of x and q of x are polynomials. And, very important here, q of x cannot equal zero. Now stop and think about why q of x shouldn't be zero specifically thinking about p of x over q of x like that. Why shouldn't q of x be zero? Okay, q of x can't be zero because we would then be dividing by zero, which would make this thing undefined, right? And we don't, you know, undefined is undefined, right? It doesn't have a definition. So, um, you know, that's why we don't want q of x to be zero, okay? And we'll talk more about that as we kind of go through these problems here too. All right, but polynomials there. Because technically zero is a polynomial, right? So Q of X could be zero, but we just say it, it can't be. All right, so what are we gonna be doing with this stuff? So before we get into the actual adding and subtracting, um, let's take a look at um, an example here of a rational function, right? Okay, so this this is a rational function, right? The numerator is a polynomial or would expand out to a polynomial if you wanted to, right? X minus one is also a polynomial. And we wanna know what is the domain of this function? Remember domain, I guess maybe I should put like y equals here or something like that. The domain describes all the possible x values, right? So all the functions we've been dealing with so far in this class, the domain has been negative infinity to infinity, right? We've been able to pretty much take the, you know, we've been able to like put in any x value we want. Um, but in this case, right, there is one x value that does not work. All right, and it all has to do with the idea that we don't want our denominator here, q of x, to be equal to zero, right? So if we look at our denominator here, x minus one, could x minus one equal zero? And the answer is yes, right? x minus one could be zero if x was what? Okay, if x is one. So we don't want x to equal one, so that x minus so that x minus one is not equal to zero, and so that this does not equal zero, right? We do not want that to be equal to zero there. Okay, so then what's our domain? Well, our domain is not negative infinity to infinity, because negative infinity to infinity includes one. Okay, so we need to exclude one. So we'll still start at negative infinity, but then if we continue on our interval here, we have to break up at one, right? And we're going to exclude the one there. And then we'll start again at one, and then we'll go to the right of one like that and put a little u in between there, 
okay? So again, think about an interval here. This interval, think about that interval as being like a number line, right? And there's like the number one. We want to exclude that, so put like an open circle there. So we want all the numbers to the left of one to count, so that's negative infinity to one, right? And we want all the numbers to the right of one to count in the domain, so that's from one to infinity over here. Oops, too many print, too many commas there. And so our two intervals there are negative infinity to one, the left-hand side here, and one to infinity, the right-hand side there of that number line. Okay? So you basically just don't want the denominator to equal zero. You want to figure out the x values that make the denominator zero and exclude those from your domain. So there is the domain right there. All right, another thing we want to be able to do with our exp um, rational functions is to be able to simplify them. Okay, so again, you'll see up here, polynomial, and the denominator, we also have a polynomial times polynomial, which again, which again, we could expand out if we really wanted to. However, if we're trying to simplify, expanding, multiplying this stuff out is not what we want to do. That's going to make it more complex. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to factor and see if we can get anything to cancel, right? So um, this x squared plus 5x plus 6, go ahead and think about how you would factor that. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and try to factor it yourself there. It does factor. It factors to x plus 3 and x plus 2. Okay, go ahead and try and factor this one right here. That factors to x plus 2 and x plus 1. And then we still have that x plus 3 from the um, other, you know, binomial there. Okay, now, to simplify this, what simplifies here? How can we simplify this? Well, if you're not sure about how to simplify this, think about like um, six over 10. This is also a rational function, okay? Six over 10, it's a very plain one, right? Six is just the constant six and 10 is the constant 10, but you know how to simplify this, don't you? All right, you know that this would simplify down to like three fifths, okay? But there's an intermediate step here that you may be missing, right? Six is really two times three and 10 is really two times five. And since you have these twos in the numerator and denominator like that, the twos can cancel out, leaving you with that three-fifths that this is simplifying to, right? And so the same principle is true. Actually, I'll go ahead and just leave it there. The same principle is true over here as well, okay? What's a common factor in the numerator and denominator? Well, the x plus threes, right? They can cancel. And the x plus twos, they can cancel. Okay, so when I factor out like that, well, when I, div when I factor, right, these are actually dividing out. So I have a one here and a one here when they cancel out with those two down there. And so a one times one leaves me with a one in the numerator because they divide it out. So it's a one in the numerator and then I'm left with an x plus one in the denominator, just like that. Okay, and there's our simplified answer. Now, we could say here x squared plus 5x plus 6 is equal, or sorry, um, over x squared plus 3x plus 2 times x plus three. So we can say our original rational function here is equal to one over x plus one with a caveat though, with an exception, okay? X cannot equal negative two or negative three. Why? Why did I know to put these numbers here? Well, if you look back up here in our original function, or if you even look at the factored version down here, right, there were three x values that caused problems for us in that denominator, in the original function, right? Um, x equals negative two, x equals negative one, and x equals negative three. All three of those values would have caused our, numer our denominator to be zero. We would have been undefined. And in fact, negative three and negative two are special because they would have caused our numerator to be zero too, which is zero over zero, which is another form called indeterminate form. Okay, and again, we'll talk more about that um, if we get to graphing and stuff like that. Okay. Um, but most importantly, right, these three numbers here would be excluded from our domain because they, you know, um, make our denominator zero. Okay, however, when you get down here to this simplified version, right, that negative two and negative three work no, no problem in this, right? Negative two is okay here, negative three is okay to plug in there, but that's not true for this original um, rational function. Okay, right, negative two and negative three do not work. So, we can say these two things are, these two things here are equal, 
but only when x is not negative 2 and x is not negative 3. Okay, this thing has no problem when x is negative 2 or negative 3. This thing, however, does have a problem at negative 2 and negative 3. And so for things to be equal, they need to be exactly the same. So that's why when we, when we um, you know, say these two things are equal here, we want to make sure that we, you know, with the exception that, you know, as long as x is not negative 2 or negative 3. Okay, so be careful with that when we're canceling things out. But this is how you would simplify it from there to there. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, so if you guys want to again pause this and give it a try for yourself first before you let me kind of you know spoil it, or then you know if you need some help, watch the video and then pause it at some point once you get some help to try it on your own. Um, anyway, um, so again we want to simplify, so we're going to factor. So I can see here that there's a GCF from that polynomial of what? Well, of x. Whoops, and I said x and then I didn't pull it out there. Okay, so taking x out leaves 1 plus x squared behind, and then 1 minus x squared also factors to 1 minus x, 1 plus x. That's a difference of squares there. Okay, so again, this factored to this, okay, and then this factored to this right there, just so you guys can, like, you know, see where all that stuff came from. And then this right here, that also factors with a GCF. We can take out an x squared, and we're left with a 1 minus x to the, now let's see here, when I take an x squared out of x to the 6, that's x to the 4th. Okay, now let's see here. This actually can factor a little bit more. This right here is a difference of squares, okay? So we can actually factor this a little bit more. So I'll leave the numerator. Okay, but that denominator, x squared, this is one minus x squared, and this becomes one plus x squared, okay? And then this is also a difference of squares. We can factor one more time here. This is why we spent all that time factoring that last unit because we're going to be using it here too. Okay, just like that. And again, this thing right here factored to these two right here by difference of squares. Okay, so now what can we get to cancel? Well, I see a 1 plus x squared that cancels out with that 1 plus x squared, 1 minus x and 1 minus x, and 1 plus x and 1 plus x. And this x canceled out with this x squared as well. And so what's left in the numerator? Well, they all canceled, so it's just a one. And then what's left in the denominator? Well, this x squared was canceled out with this x. And so we can factor out, or there's one x left behind. And so there it is simplified. Now, what are the excluded values? Well, you know, um, According to this, x still cannot be zero, right? If, if x were zero, then that would make this whole thing one over zero. So we don't need to worry about excluding zero. But what else did we lose here? Well, um, if x is one or negative one, right? If I put a positive one in for that x right there, it would be one squared and be one minus one, which would give me zero. Or if I put a negative one in for that x right there, it'd be negative one squared, which is one, one minus one would be zero, and so the whole denominator would be zero. So we wanna make sure we also exclude those x values as well. Okay, and so I did say at the top of these notes we we're going to add and subtract. We're going to start with adding and subtracting um, rational functions that already have a common denominator, and then we'll um, focus on um, adding and subtracting without a common denominator tomorrow, and then we'll squeeze in hopefully multiplication division as well. So, to add fractions with a common denominator like this problem right here, right? It's it's really it's combining like terms. You have one fourth and you're going to add five fourths well you have if you have one of something and you add five of that same something you now have six of that something okay and then don't forget to simplify Ooh. simplify your results right so six over four that's really just three times two over two times two the twos cancel three over two and you don't need to write this intermediate step if you don't want to i'm just doing it here just to show you guys Okay, um, let's try here. Um, 15 sevenths minus 22 sevenths. So subtraction now, right? So if you have 15 of something, it's you have 15 sevenths, and we're gonna take away 22 sevenths. 15 take away 22, oh, 15 of something, take away 22 of that same something, you're gonna have a negative seven over seven, which simplifies to negative one over one, or just negative one, right? So that was nice, simplified nicely. So don't forget to simplify afterwards if you can. So now what does it look like with rational functions? Well, again, you're looking for a common denominator. And we do have a common denominator, right? They both have an x. So we just 
add, right? So it'll be x minus one plus one, right? So we're gonna take the x plus x minus one from here, and we're gonna to add to the one from here. And put it over x. Okay? And we combine like terms in the numerator there, right? So x minus one plus one is x over x, right? Because the minus one and the plus one kind of cancel out there. <laughs> x over x, that simplifies, doesn't it, to just be one, okay? So again, we'll say it's equal to one, comma, as long as x is not equal to what? What x value will, will, what x value will make this equation not true? You know, for what value of x, if I rewrite the original problem here, and we know that it eventually simplifies to just a one, okay? What value of x What value of x here, okay, will make this, actually I should just leave this blank there. What value of x are, is this original, you know, um, rational function, or rational um, expression here, for what value of x would these not equal one? Well, it's when x is what? Well, if x is zero here, right, this denominator would be undefined, and so we don't want x to be zero, okay? So so one is our answer. What it simplifies down to be as long as x is not zero. Maybe I should circle the whole thing here. Put a little comma in there for x not equal to zero. And this is x not equal to zero there that I'm saying, okay? All right, let's try another one. All right, here is a subtraction problem. Now, Subtraction, again, it already is a common denominator, so we just gotta subtract the two numerators, right? So I'm gonna combine these together in one fraction, so we two, oof, minus x plus three over x plus one, like that. Now notice, right, that minus sign right here is in front of parentheses, which means it distributes to both terms here. Okay, so it's gonna be two minus x minus three over x plus one. This is a very common mistake that students make, and so I'm trying to write out this very explicitly right now. Again, you can skip steps wherever you feel comfortable, but when you have a subtraction sign in front of a fraction like that, it distributes to the numerator, or you can distribute to the denominator, your choice there. But then we wouldn't have like terms, so. So watch that with a subtraction sign, okay? Um, so two minus x minus three becomes negative one minus x over x plus one. You might think, well, Mr. Wimmer, that doesn't simplify any further, right? That's it, we're done. We're not. It does simplify a little bit more, actually. Okay, both of these terms in the numerator have a negative. So we can factor a negative one out and we're left with one plus x over x plus one, which is the same thing as negative one times x plus one, right? One plus x is the same as x plus one. And then the x plus one's cancel and we're left with a negative one as our final answer there. And again, comma, as long as x is not equal to what in this case? We don't want x to be negative one. Again, that would make us undefined. So maybe I should circle like that, okay? So be careful, right? We could watch for factoring, right? Like right there, we could factor out and then simplify, okay? Don't forget to check, check, check to see if you can simplify after adding or subtracting. Okay, so um, tomorrow we'll talk about multiplication and division and we'll also look at adding and subtracting with non-like terms. Alrighty, so um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions, post them in the updates page, or you can always message me too.